Good afternoon and welcome back to my electronics workbench where today I'm continuing the series of printed circuit board manufacture at home and I'm up to the stage of applying the etch resist to the blank circuit board. Um, for this particular board I'm going to use the toner transfer method so that's the one I'll be describing today. There are a few other methods like the uh, UV sensitive photoresist method and also you can do it by hand with a permanent marker or Dalo pen or some sort of paint. Um, or whatever, or you can tape it out the old school way and uh, use basically stick on tape and pads and all that stuff. Um, which I'm not entirely sure that you can even buy that anymore, but uh, if you can, I suppose you could do it that way if you wanted to. But um, yeah, anyway, this particular uh, method is the toner transfer method, which is one of the most popular ones at the moment. Um, because it's really quite easy and you don't really need much but uh, you do need a few things um, so yeah this is uh, where things do start to get slightly more expensive although with all this stuff there are ways of keeping the cost down which I'll describe but um, anyway in particular you will need a laser printer of some kind um, or at very least access to one or a photocopier uh, this particular one is just an old Epson laser printer um, it's an EPL 5900L, which I use exclusively in Linux because the last driver written for this um, was for Windows 2000, and it only kind of really works in Windows XP, and this printer doesn't work in Windows 7 or Vista or anything higher than that. So um, works great under Linux though, which is pretty funny, considering it was made in 1995 or something. Um, anyway. But there we go, uh, so you need a laser printer of some sort, and um, obviously if you don't have one you will hopefully be able to get access to one, or you can get um, a public photocopier at a library or a copy shop, or something like that. Um, it doesn't really matter what um, you use, as long as you have something. Um, the only exception to that, I think, are certain br models of Brother printers, and possibly... Uh, I'm going to say Samsung maybe, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, there are reports online. There's a um, Yahoo Groups group on Yahoo Groups, which may not be on Yahoo Groups shortly, but is there at the moment, called Homebrew PCBs, and they have spoken um, a while ago about certain brother um, laser printers having different uh, types of toner to most laser printers and requiring a higher temperature and possibly the composition of the toner is such that it can't be refused. Um, so maybe you can't use those, I'm not entirely sure, unless someone's figured out a way to do it or not. Um, yeah, so if you are thinking of buying a printer for this or if you already have one, um, it might be a, worth a look, especially if it's a brother. Um, to look it up online and just see if it's possible to use it, because some of them apparently are not, last time I checked. But that was a while ago. Anyway, um, yeah, so a laser printer or other laser copying device uh, you will need. Um, you also need some sort of uh, thing to uh, heat the printed image and get it onto the board. So for this, for example, I'm using a laminator, which I've modified to run at a higher temperature. Um, there is a website I can link to which describes in detail how to do that. Um, and again, homebrew PCBs have quite a lot of information on doing that, but I'm not going into that right now. Um, you can also use things like hot plates or clothes irons, other such things, as long as it's hot and flat and you can apply pressure to it, basically. Um, although I have used the clothes iron uh, before, but it's not that great. It's um, it's easy, too easy to press too hard and end up with a squashed image that sort of flares out and um, doesn't work that well. But the uh, laminator is a lot better. It has consistent even even pressure and there's not too much pressure and everything comes out basically perfect. So um, if you are intending to do this on a regular basis, um, I definitely advise getting a laminator or other similar machine. Um, I've seen people also using fuser units out of old laser printers, um, as long as you get the thickness right. Uh, these have sort of soft rollers, so you can fit thicker stuff through than just paper, but with a laser printer, obviously, you have to um, modify the roller mounting and stuff so that there's enough clearance, because this is about 1.6mm thick, and you can even get thicker boards as well. Um, 
If you don't want to do that, you can use thin stuff like 0.8mm board, but I don't really like that sort of stuff because it's uh, more liable to snap in half by accident. I prefer the 1.6 stuff, and that's the easiest stuff to get because it's the most commonly used, and it's probably cheaper to get as well. Um, because it's more common. Anyway, uh, so yes, you need a laser printer, you need a heated thing, and you need your blank board, obviously, but uh, we already know that. There's my design here. Um, let's put that out of the way. But probably the most important part of this uh, whole method is the uh, transfer media. So you can buy this stuff, which is by a company called Pulsar Professional FX. They uh, make a purpose-built um, paper designed for this method, uh, which is really quite good, actually. And they also do a little... Um, well, they call it green TRF, but it stands for toner reactive foil, um, which basically is a... I'll go into that later, but anyway. Um, they do both of these, which are both very good co products and uh, work very well. However, these are a little bit expensive. So if you are wanting to cheap out a lot um, on this thing, which is arguably not advisable because you won't get as great results, um, but it's still perfectly doable, uh, you can use what I started out with using was... Um, uh, basically, just old pages out of magazines. If you get a magazine that has glossy, glossy pages, or maybe if you use, even if you use junk mail, but um, I wouldn't really want to put that in a printer because it's a bit kind of crusty. Um, but magazine pages, a, d a decent glossy magazine with a uh, decent, decent print on it. Um, if you cut the old pages out of that, and it's best to use uh, just text, text pages if you if you can. Anything with dark images and lots of ink. Um, can cause problems, but a, a, a fairly white page, one with text is good. Um, if you take cut that out of a out of a magazine and print onto that, um, that can be used um, for transferring the design. It's not the best. You will get uh, bits of paper fiber left in the in the toner after it goes onto the board, and that'll potentially leave holes that the etchant can wick into and it can make a little bit of pinholing on the board once you've etched it. Um, and it's not, yeah, I mean it works but it's not great. If you use uh, that, um, you'll get a working board but um, you may not like the look of it or the quality. Um, perfectly fine for prototyping I suppose. Um, that kind of thing, but <coughs> If you want something that uh, will last a long time and that is easy to work with, uh, you're probably better off using something like this. Now, in saying that, this um, has been ripped off by China, as so many things often are. And in fact, I've actually got some of this here. So, <laughs> if you open this package, this is what I bought recently, just to see what it's like, because I've never actually tried it. Um, here's basically some sheets of Toner transfer paper, which are uh, pretty much this stuff. This is blue, and this is yellow. They're effectively the same thing, as far as I can tell. Although this is much cheaper, and it's from China. And I haven't tried it out, but there will be a video shortly after this where I give this a try and see if it works. Um, because I would like to know. And if it does, I might buy more of it. And if it does, I'll recommend it to people. But anyway. Um, that can be uh that can do stuff later with itself. Um in addition to in addition to but um as an alternative to this stuff, um you can also use some people claim they've used inkjet photo paper um with quite good results. I have never tried that myself. Um I don't really have any good source for that that's cheap and to be honest this is probably about the same cost and this is really good. So if you're looking at buying inkjet photo paper, you probably should just buy this instead, <laughs> to be honest. Um, unless this stuff works well, in which case I'd recommend this, but who knows. Uh, maybe worth supporting these guys because they do do a really good product. And in any case, you'll probably want to buy this. Now, this is the, um, like I said, the uh, toner reactive foil. And the idea is that um, once you transfer the image with this paper onto your board, um, even though this will transfer pretty much perfectly all the toner from this paper to the board, um, 
you will still have little holes in the toner because pretty much most printers just aren't perfect. Um, especially on large areas like large copper pores with large ground planes or whatever. Um, you will get little pinholes and after etching you'll get pitting and you have to clean it up and it's just a pain and it can cause a problem with really fine traces as well. This stuff you basically just put on over the top of the toner and it kind of seals in over the top and prevents pinholing and all that kind of stuff so it's actually quite good. So I guess whether you're using this or if you're using this, which we don't know how good this is but if it works. Um, either way, whichever one of these you use you probably want to get some of this anyway. Um, so yeah. But there we go, enough about that. Um, I'll actually get down to using it. So, um, let's see. So we have uh, we have the uh, artwork here. Now, there's a good point to note with this. This is actually printed backwards. Um, I say backwards. It is the correct way up if I was looking at it. Uh, the same way round as I would on the copper side of the board, but when you want to stick it onto the board for edge resist, you've got to flip it around like that, which means it will be backwards. So, <coughs> you need to print the thing backwards so that when you flip it over, it becomes the right way around. Um, the most obvious thing with this is that the text on here, which is 93 PS9, um, that's facing around the correct way. Obviously when I print it out, the text will be backwards when I lay it on top of the thing. It'll be around the correct way, so uh, make sure of that. Anyway, if you confuse yourself, you'll figure it out. But uh, worth noting that, uh, before you waste the expensive paper, um, you know, do a test print on this, on just normal paper, and uh, be sure that everything makes sense. So I'll get that over there, and I'm going to bring up um, let's see, you probably won't be able to see this very well, but that doesn't matter, because it's not the point. Uh, if I bring up the, um, file. Okay, so you might be able to see the design up on the monitor here, I'm not entirely sure, it might be washed out. Um, it doesn't really matter, but anyway, I'm going to take this uh, thing here, because it's around the wrong way, and I'm going to flip it. So it's backwards. And I'm also going to, uh, move it so that it's um, on one half of the page because I want to use I want to waste as little paper as possible basically so what I'm going to do um, because this is basically uh, it takes up about half an A4 page it's effectively an A5 page so what we can do is just cut a piece of A4 paper in half um, so what I'm going to do here, and again, this is just a test, because I want to be sure. I'm going to target an A5 size piece of paper, which is just half an A4. And I'm going to stick this in my printer, which I will turn on. Stick it around this way. And I'm going to print it as a test. Now it's also worth noting you want to know which way up your printer goes. Hmm, that might be a bit noisy. Sorry about that. Um, it's a good idea to know which way up your printer prints. So for example, I know my one prints on the side facing up. So if I load the paper in here, this side will get the image printed on it when it comes out the top. This might be different for your printer. You might want to find that out because this paper and the other stuff um, can only be printed to on one side. Uh, you have to print it on the correct side, otherwise it won't work. So, um, yeah, make sure you figure out which way around your printer goes before you put this in it again, so you don't end up wasting it. Because uh, the coating on this can probably only really be used once. Um, once you run it through the printer, um, yeah, you probably can't really run it through again and expect to get decent results with it. So you want to use as little as this as possible, and um, just do that, make sure everything's good. So I'm just going to print this uh, as is, just checking the uh, paper. I mean, okay, I've set it to A4, I'm just going to trick the printer and just tell it I'm printing on A4. Um, 
Also obviously worth putting your toner density up to highest. Turn toner save off because that often uh, leaves little holes in the toner on purpose just to save toner. So you want to turn all that kind of stuff off. Um, put the density on highest, put the resolution on highest and um, yeah have all that set up. So I'm going to tell it that I'm printing on A4 because we've basically um, done that. It doesn't really matter that the uh, page is half the length it should be. The printer won't really care. Well, it'll care, it'll complain probably that the paper was too short, but as long as you don't have a tiny piece that's going to get stuck in there somewhere um, it won't matter. And now it's yeah, flashing a red light at me because I was a bit of a dick to it. <laughs> but anyway, we can see it comes out around the right way and everything makes sense. So, you also see that it's printed backwards, which is exactly what we want. So now all I have to do really is just cut a piece of this to the same size as this and run it through, which is what I'm going to do. So this uh, one here as we can see has two sides, a light side and a dark side. The light shiny side is the one you want to print on. So like I said with mine, this side will face up. But anyway, uh, that's too big so I want to cut this off. So let's cut, uh, let's see If it goes there, that'll probably work. This doesn't have to be perfect. And if you've got a proper uh, guillotine or something, this will be a lot easier, but hey, whatever. should work. Um, they also say with this stuff to keep it in the bag because apparently the coating can dry out. Um, if it's not stored um, in a nice way. Anyway, so uh, put it over there. In fact, I'll just stick all of this over here. Um, yeah, so stick that in there. Ah, yes, this is a uh, US letter size, by the way. It's not A4, so I have to make my printer adjustment slightly there, but that's all right. Okay, so now we want to print this again, and I will want to go to toner density. Put that on maximum, and all that. So everything's good there. You can possibly see that up there, I'm not sure. If you can, well, yeah, great. If not, I'll overlay it um, separately. <laughs> anyway, so, we print this. See what happens. So there we go. That's come out really well. I mean, you can see, well, you probably can't see, um, there are some points on this uh, track, this wide track here, where I can see the uh, toner is a little lighter. So that's the kind of place where you'd get possibly pinholes and where you really, uh, really have an advantage with using this over the top of it. So anyway. Um, Now that I've got this printed, uh, we then have to uh, concentrate on getting it onto the blank copper. So the um, basic thing with that is you just cut this out, stick it on there, shove it through the laminator, or iron it with your clothes iron, or stick it in your sandwich maker. So I'll just move my laser printer out of the way. 
um, because it's kind of in the way now. And then I can set this up properly and I can show you how the laminator works um, and all that stuff. So hold on one second and I'll just restructure everything. Okay, so with the laser printer out of the way and a bit more room here, I can uh, concentrate on uh, refusing the uh, toner from this paper onto the board. Um, so with this I use my laminator, which I've modified to run at a hotter temperature than it normally would, which is why the uh, top of the case is a little bit melty, but that's fine. Um, yeah, if you do want to uh, use one of these, uh, I don't think you can buy this model anymore, but most laminators are usable. Um, the uh, modifications required to modify them will probably vary depending on the model, um, but most cheap basic laminators will be usable. Um, some of them will need to have the roller mounts moved um, to accommodate for thicker material. Um, some of them won't. It all just depends on what you get. Um, but yeah, you could add a switch to modify the circuitry to uh, switch between normal temperature and the hot temperature for doing toner stuff. Um, so you could still use these as, as a laminator normally if you did want to do that. You just have to modify it with a switch. I haven't done that because I don't laminate anything normally. Um, I've bought this specifically just for doing circuit boards. Um, it's also good not only for the toner transfer thing, but it's also great for applying photosensitive resist to blank board. So it's uh, useful for that. It's also useful for applying the uh, TRF film on top of this afterwards. So if you do plan on doing a bunch of circuit board manufacture, um, probably good idea to just get one of these because they're really good um, compared to using a clothes iron which I wouldn't really recommend um, while that works it's yeah th these are a lot um, a lot more precise and a lot better I find anyway uh, so what I'll do is um, tape this on here so basically we uh, align this with um, the board however which way we're doing it you see make sure it's in the right way yep that's the way I'm doing it so we just line this up, you know, we can line it up to uh, make sure the edges all match and everything makes sense. And then you just uh, take some masking tape and uh, put this on, well, just one edge really, you don't need to do it, um, on the, uh, I think I just got to, uh, hang on, I think I have to, uh, I think I have to align this slightly off off center because of this pre drilled hole just to avoid um one of the traces I have to sort of uh move it over slightly. Which is not a big deal, but just to make sure it just it just squeezes on there. Um as it is, so Let's see, but that's uh, yeah, so there we go. So you just tape this, uh, one side is, is perfectly fine. Um, and then we wait for this to heat up, uh, there's a red light which will come on when it's uh, up to temperature, that obviously hasn't happened yet. So um, when that happens, after you've got this all all uh, ready. Let's make sure that all makes sense. Um, yeah, then you just put it through like you would with a piece of paper. Um, so I'm just waiting for this to get hot enough, basically. Um, <laughs> so yeah, what else can I say? Um, hmm. Not much else to say at this point. Oh, there we go, the lights come on. Okay, so now we can just start feeding the board through. Now obviously this is a rather large board, so I don't really have to worry about anything too much. I just stick it in there. Okay, need to give it a little push. Well, there we go, and that'll uh, take its way through the laminator and everything will hopefully work. Um, 
Yeah. You do typically need to uh, put the thing through more than once. Um, the exact number of times is debatable. Um, probably depends on the actual board itself, the size, um, your laminator, the thickness of whatever paper you're using. As I can see that hasn't actually adhered at all. So it's not even hot enough yet. So I'll need to... Uh, hmm. Need to do that again. That's alright. It'll get there. I hope this thing still works. I haven't used it for ages. But it feels pretty hot, so um, yeah, probably just probably just the large large board just needs to heat up. This is why you need to pass it through a few times. I usually do about ten ten times through, which is uh, usually fine. There we go. Looks like it's sticking now. I think. Obviously, bear in mind this will be uh, quite hot, so you don't want to. Um, Hmm. Don't want to burn your fingers. Possibly you could wear gloves for this. Um, but it shouldn't be that big of a deal. It's not uh, that hot if you handle it by the edges. I'm going to run this through several times. And yeah. Okay, so after about uh, ten goes through the laminator, everything uh, seems to be all right. So yeah, it uh, took a while to heat this up because it was rather large, and so it didn't um, adhere immediately. But now it uh, all seems to be quite good. So basically, the uh, next point of this is just to let it cool down naturally. Um, and then basically just chuck the thing in a bowl of water and let the uh, let the paper soak up the water and then it will just fall straight off leaving hopefully the toner on the copper at least that's the idea and with this paper it uh, typically does that because uh, this stuff's really good you won't really get the same results like that with uh, magazine paper or other stuff I don't think you have to kind of rub it them a bit um, I had to use a toothbrush to scrape the paper fibers off uh, when I used to use the magazine paper, but this stuff just, just falls straight off, so um, it's pretty good. So actually what I'll do is I'll just put this aside and I'll get a uh, tray of water just to uh, stick this in and demonstrate how easy this comes off. So while that's cooling there, um, I'll do that. Okay, so I've got some water here in a lunchbox lid, and I'm going to put the uh, circuit board and paper in here now that it's all cooled off. It's a good idea to do it once it's just cooled down naturally so you don't cause any thermal shock, which might make the paper lift uh, too fast and may take some of the toner with it. Um, so it's a good idea to make sure it's nice and cold first. Anyway, so just get some water. Um, cold, warm, doesn't really matter, but uh, I'm just going to cold water here and uh, cold board. So all I have to do is just uh, put this in there, and once the uh, water is soaked all through the paper, the uh, paper should just slide straight off. Um, I guess I could take the uh, masking tape off first. That would probably help. Just to uh, give the added effect. Just be careful not to pull this too hard. I'll just uh, get that free. And I can um, just roll that over the top there. Okay, so yes, I'll just uh, put this in the water now. And <laughs> you should be able to see 
the uh, motor going in or on or whatever. So let's poke it with this. All right, so I'll just uh, wait for that to um, go in for a bit. But anyway, um, I can just play around with this. In fact, actually, it's probably lifting off right now. So if I uh, just do this carefully so as not to uh, get water spilling all over my bench. But if I was to uh, pick up the board... There, <laughs> I must do one. Pick up the board like this. The paper should just fall off. As you can see, indeed, it is doing so. Just like that. And that's what you expect from uh, the high quality types of transfer paper. So, um, yeah, just, just being careful about all this wet paper and stuff everywhere, but. There we go, if you can uh, see that. Just holding up for this camera there. But, um, yeah, I'm not sure I can actually see that very well. <laughs> hmm. Interesting, two cameras is even more confusing than trying to use one. Okay, um, I'm sort of trying to slosh water everywhere and get everything wet. Um, yeah, I'll just uh, leave that there, and we'll um, come back to that in a second. I'll just clean this all up so I don't uh, spill water everywhere, and then I'll um, move on to the next stage of the process. Okay, so now that we've got the uh, artwork transferred to the board here, um, I could theoretically just etch this as it is right now. Um, however, as I said before, um, a laser printer typically has uh, trouble putting down a thick amount of toner on large areas such as these um, large traces here um, and so we do get a thin a thinner toner deposit on these uh, areas especially this one here is not that great there are some holes and it's quite thin I would be worried about the etch and getting into that and uh, causing a problem so um, there's two ways to solve that uh, first is to uh, use a Dalo pen or permanent marker, sharpie, whatever you call them. Um, in New Zealand I think Vivid is the popular name. Um, anyway, this is basically etch resist in a felt tip pen, basically. Um, this is a, this one is from Dick Smith or J-Car, I'm not sure exactly, I can't remember. Um, probably Dick Smith, it's pretty old. But J-Car sell them as well, and you can buy these at pretty much any electronics uh, supply company. Um, usually called Dalo Pen or Edge Resist Pen. I guess Dalo is probably the brand name of the original product or something like that. Um, but yeah, this one is called an Action Marker or something. Anyway, uh, so you could just take this out and you know colour in the uh, trace with this if you've got any holes or something like that. Um, that's one way of doing it. That's a that's a cheap way of doing it, and you know that's perfectly valid. I, I would say you know to go over like these large areas with this, and the thin areas should be fine because they have thicker toner on them um, for the most part. So that's a uh, probably the easiest way to do it. And I said you, you don't need this. You could use just a standard permanent marker. They generally work fairly well. Um, but this is the official thing. But I'm going to use this one. This is the. Uh, TRF foil. Um, the great thing about this is that it's much easier to use. Um, instead of having to go around with this, hunting down all the pinholes and filling them in, you just lay this over the top, laminate it on, and it just covers the entire thing. So, um, Well, I say the entire thing. You may still find some holes that you may want to touch up with this, um, even so, or this may have a wrinkle in it or something, and you might get a, a missed spot or something like that. So I have it to do that uh, most times when I've used it. Um, but for the most part, it's a lot faster than doing this. Uh, anyway, so um, this I'm going to use. It's uh, oh yes, uh, other thing obviously is to inspect the actual transfer um, to make sure everything everything's come out fine. And I can't see any problem with this at all. It's uh, aside from these lighter areas, which I said we'll we'll fix that afterwards. Um, the only problem I see is on this edge here. 
Um, there's one trace where a little sort of a little sort of notch has come out of the track. I'm not entirely sure why. Um, possibly it just didn't stick to the board or something, or wasn't hot enough at that point. Um, so that there, I'd have to uh, I could touch up with the pen after I put this on it. Um, obviously, if you put the pen on first, then this won't stick to the area, so that's a problem. So if you are using both, uh, put this on first to the laminator, and then at the final part, if there's any problems you need to touch up, use the pen. Um, so yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. This one's come out really well um, as it is, so I'm just going to put this on top and then finish it off with this. And then that'll be pretty much ready for etching at that point. So um, turn my laminator on again oh, and uh, plug it in. Probably help. There we go. Okay, so we take this out. Um, and they sell this in like a large sort of, well, I'd say a roll, but it's it's not really a roll. It's kind of a roll. It'd be a roll if it was on a roll, but it's not. It's on a flat piece of stuff. Here we go. Um, this again has two sides. Uh, the dull side is the transfer side, so that's the side you want to put against the board. The shiny side is the side that goes on the outside. So we uh, just want to have a look at this. Uh, cut a piece that's a little bit bigger than the board um, on the long side so I mean on the on the side that will go into the laminator because you need to wrap it round to make sure it holds on um, so I'll just cut this about here you don't want to cut it too wide if you have a excess of it sticking out over the side of the board it can stick to the laminator and make it a bit annoying, so it's best to uh, cut this stuff fairly close to the actual board size. Um, and it's quite hard to cut too because it's rather thin, um, at least with scissors anyway. It's sort of a, a strange sort of consistency, but uh, yeah, I'll get there. Okay, that's uh oops. That's a really horrible cut, but whatever. <laughs> That'll work. Okay. Um obviously to note with this don't touch the transfer side or you'll contaminate it and possibly prevent it from working properly. And now if I can just try and get this back in the bag. Um, I don't know of any third party source for this kind of stuff. Unlike the transfer paper itself, I don't think there's an eBay ripoff of this yet. There may be in the future. Um, but this is not too expensive and it works pretty well, so um, yeah. Uh, so we've got this here. Take the masking tape again, I think. Um, so we just lie this over the board like that, and I'm going to uh, hang on. Ah, oh, yes. Stick it on some tape. It's pretty much the same as doing the transfer. Um, very similar sort of thing. Should do it. Um, it is worth noting that when you do put this in the laminator, you need to uh, keep it keep it straight and um, try to try not let it wrinkle up, which is harder than it sounds. But um, if you do get it wrinkled, then you will have a problem. Anyway, just wait for this to heat up. There we go. Okay, the red light is now on and the laminator is ready to use. Um, so unlike the uh, transfer paper, this is a lot thinner um, and you don't need to do it. Uh, put it through 
ten times or anything like that, it should be fine just to put it through once. Um, that said, this being a large board, I'm not entirely certain, so maybe it'll have to go through twice, I don't know, we'll just have to see um, what happens. Um, yeah, so... I think the best way of doing this um, is to put it through... So I'm just holding this kind of tight as I put it in. And hold this sort of tight as I put it in, and then I'll pull it up and hold it. Um, just try and show you how that works. So anyway, I put this in here. Once it's going through, we sort of lift this and apply pressure to it. I mean, I say apply pressure, give it, a, make it taut, um, and this will basically mean that the. Uh, well, there's less chance of wrinkling if you do it this way, basically. At least, that's the idea. <laughs> Doesn't always not wrinkle, but... Um, should work. And there we go, that's gone through. Um, looks like it's transferred all at once. Um, there's a little bit of wrinkling here, but that's okay, I guess. Um, I'll shove it through again, just in case. It won't really matter if I put it through twice. Um, but it looks like it has all mostly gone through, apart from maybe this corner here. Not certain. Um, yeah, there may be better ways of doing this to avoid wrinkling, I'm not entirely certain. Um, yeah. Still. I should have looked that up before I tried it. It's been a while since I did this, so I probably forgot how to do it. Anyway, that should be fairly good, so I'm going to turn this off and put it to the side to cool down. And, uh, yeah, this is quite toasty, so I'm just going to sit it like that so I don't burn my fingers. Um, I probably want this in a second, so I'll get that ready. And, uh, yeah, so. Hmm. There has been has been some wrinkling at this point, so I may have pulled it too tight or or something. Um Or maybe I didn't follow the instructions properly. <laughs> like I said, I can't actually remember. Let's have a look at them. Cut a piece of foil the width of the board plus two inches longer. Uh, lay the dull side of the foil over the toner image and wrap one inch around the leading edge of the board and insert into the laminator. Immediately after the rollers have grabbed the board and foil, drop your fingers down on top of the foil to apply resistance. Or drag over the foil to prevent wrinkling of the foil as the board is drawn into the laminator. Um, hmm. Maybe I didn't keep pressure on it when I was pulling it when I first put it in. Um, because the... Uh, the uh, stuff is, has has been fine at this point. It's just this area we have a couple of wrinkles there, so um, might be why. But it has uh, covered most of the tracks. In fact, this point is where there is no track, so that probably that doesn't matter. Okay, so I've applied the uh, green TRF foil to the uh, well. Should just be TR foil because TRF stands for toner reactive foil, so that's like saying toner reactive foil foil. Um, so I've applied the green TRF to the board, and unfortunately it hasn't transferred very well on this area here. I'm not entirely sure why. I don't know if the toner was dirty there or um, some other problem. It may have been 
may have been a lack of heat, seeing as that was the last part. This this could have uh, this bit went in first, and that could have um, lowered the heat of the uh, rollers and everything to the point where it didn't transfer at this point. Um, I tried doing it again with another piece, but that made no difference. So I'm going to have to touch these bits up with the uh, pen if there's any holes on these uh, tracks that need to be filled in. But it has uh, worked for most of the image, so everything is pretty good. Uh, there were some slight wrinkles on it. Um, there's like a little wrinkle went along here, so I'll have to do that with the pen. And uh, this bit here, and uh, most of this, I guess. Uh, especially this this big trace along here, that's going to be an issue. These smaller ones may not need it, um, hopefully, but uh, definitely that big one around there will will probably need some, because I think there are some holes. I think there are pinholes on this large trace. Yeah, there's a few there, so... Um, that said though, the uh, TRF did uh, definitely solve the thin toner issue on these large uh, tracks here, so that's good, that's the uh, point of it. Um, but yeah, I think it may have just been, may have sort of run out of thermal mass at the, at the end of the board possibly. Um, that would be my guess, so maybe I needed to wait for the laminator to heat up a bit more. Maybe I should have left it on for longer before I put the board through, or maybe... Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Anyway, um, that's alright though. Uh, that's, that's the sort of thing you sometimes have to expect. Um, sometimes it happens. Um, this is not a uh, not a highly strictly controlled factory with uh, process control and everything. It's obviously um, home effort is not going to always come out perfectly fine each time. Um, that said, this doesn't usually happen. Of course, because I'm filming it, of course it happens. That's uh, just Murphy's Law. That's how things go. But uh, anyway, so <laughs> I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll uh, touch this up with this, and then that'll be that for this video, because uh, the next part will be obviously etching, and I'm going to do that in a completely separate, separate part, because this is already about half an hour long, I think, um, or possibly longer. Anyway, so uh, I'll... Uh, Take some photos showing the difference between the um, thin areas and the uh, areas with the TRF on it now. And uh, you can see uh, just how well this stuff does fill it in when you actually have enough heat applied. Which I suspect was the problem on this, this area. I think it ran out of heat. Anyway, but uh, there we go. Okay, so here are some comparison photographs between the original transferred toner image and the... Uh, image with the TRF over the top. And you can see that uh, in most cases where the uh, TRF actually adhered to the toner, it definitely does give a much more solid layer of uh, etch resist. Um, unfortunately the parts you can see where it hasn't transferred properly, um, that still left some sort of holes and stuff, uh, which you can see there. You can see the uh, copper shining through. So yes, those areas are the parts I will need to cover up with the Dalo pen, and typically I don't need to do it that extensively, but there you go, I suppose Murphy has to stick his oar in somewhere. Anyway, so I guess I'll just have to uh, tidy this trace here up, and maybe a few here, here and this area of these pads um, with this pen. So I'm just going to do that, and show the finished, show a photograph of the finished, finished layout after that. Um, so there's not really much to that, it's just a pen. Uh, they have a, um, it's a felt tip, sort of, and it has, it's, uh, it is pressure sensitive though, so the more you press it, the, uh, tip goes in on a spring, and you'll get a lot more ink coming out, or etch resist, or whatever it is. Um, so, don't press too hard unless you want a massive splodge of etch resist going everywhere, which is kind of annoying. Um, you just want a light pressure, um, I'm just going to start off without doing anything, and just, uh, well, I'll have to push a little bit, I think. See, there we go. Massive blob. Um, that's alright. I can just work this around. And, uh, go over these bits. But there's pretty much all there is to it. Just sort of colouring in the parts where the thing hasn't gone on properly. And of course you can draw the whole board up this way with one of these, but um, it's uh, a bit easier to do it with a computer, typically. Anyway, so um, yeah, just sort of 
go at it with that until everything's covered up, assuming you have a problem like this, which, like I said, doesn't usually happen. I'm not entirely certain why. Well, of course I'm certain why. Murphy. Murphy's Law. Every time. Every time. But yeah, I won't show this whole process, I'll just uh, finish this off and then I'll show you the finished product. Okay, so I finished touching up the edge resist with my pen. Um, I had to t touch up this area significantly, especially these larger traces here, um, which is not usually necessary, unfortunately. Um, but in this case, I guess Murphy's Law prevailed and the TRF didn't work properly, as we saw. Um, but everything's uh, fine now. I've uh, had to touch up these traces here a bit as well. They um, didn't come out very well. Uh, typically, uh, you only need to do little spots like this if the TRF wrinkles or something. Um, most of it is, is fine um, in general, but uh, yeah, that just uh, goes to show sometimes that can happen and you either have the option of just cleaning all the toner off completely, um, use acetone or sandpaper, acetone is probably a better choice, or some other sort of solvent, um, and just redoing the whole thing again, but you know, I can't be bothered doing that, uh, it would just take too long, and you know, most of it's fine, it's not that hard to, to touch everything up, so um, that's what I've done. And there may be some minor pinholes somewhere that's left that I didn't catch, or, or something like that, but that doesn't matter, I mean, a few here and there aren't going to be a big deal. Um, once you tin the board, they'll get all covered over anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, for something, if you're doing like QFP, SMDICs and stuff, and you get this sort of problem, um, you probably can't touch it up with a pen manually, so in that case you probably would have to retransfer the whole thing. In general though, um, this all worked out okay. Um, so the next, ste next step will be to etch this, but uh, that'll be in the next video, so that's, uh, that's that. So I'll uh, see you next time in the next part.